Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. We've got a lot of fun things to unbox today, but first we're going to start with this Collins guitar. That's right, what the box says it is is actually what it is this time. <laughs> I always find it funny when uh, people see a Collins box on the show and he's like, is he finally going to talk about one of those? This is actually part of my guitar forwarding service, and unfortunately, we don't have time to review this one because he wants it as soon as possible, so I'm just going to have to ship it on out to him. And because he wants it to remain in mint condition until he gets it. So we're just gonna check this one out real quick today. Well, hey, that was pretty easy. So first time looking at one of these cases, this actually looks really high end and fancy. They know what they're doing when they create a custom case, the whole double bound type thing going on here. You've got your typical squared off latches. Oh, that's cool. It's like the Les Paul Supreme cases of the early 2000s. Now let's go ahead and get this puppy open. Oh, that is interesting. See, he told me it was going to be a natural finish, but that almost lo just looks like a gold top. So this is the Collings 470JL. It's actually a signature model for Julian here. However, to be honest, this just looks like a Gretsch white penguin that's been done up in natural. So maybe check out that video if you're interested in me checking something out like that. But we've got some cool pickups here. It's got a very familiar body shape to it, but it's really incredibly light. This thing at least has to be chambered out, but we've got nylon saddles on the bridge. You've got a Bigsby on it. I'm not normally a big dot inlay fan, but they're so stylistically tiny it works. And the headstock kind of makes me laugh. It, it looks very Gibson-like, but the open book is a bit offset, so it just kind of makes it its own thing. This is cool. It's got the whole mahogany back with the mahogany neck, and we've even got the vintage style tuners here. And it's a surprisingly small guitar. Like, that feels much tinier than a Les Paul. It feels tiny. And we even got a little bit of bird's eye figuring in here. But I am really impressed by this case. That's a nice, comfy, high-end looking case. Now there's not much padding right here. I don't necessarily like that, but I guess at least it's padded in the areas it needs to be. It even has a serial number for your case. So very cool. We need to get this one shipped on. All right, next up here, let's go ahead and do a guitar because this one, we've already seen it on the show, but it had an issue and it needed to go back. So this was this American Vintage 2 75 Telecaster Deluxe, which if you remember correctly, the dot inlays were not centered, but that's not the true reason it went back. It's because it experienced some shipping trauma and caused a neck pocket crack. And on top of that, we had a really strange grounding issue on it that it, it just did not seem right to me. And if you remember correctly, this was a new guitar day order, so obviously I needed to get that fixed for him. But this shop only had ugly ones in stock, so we decided to wait for one that had a little bit more wood grain similar to that last one. So let's give this a look-see here. You can check out the full review and demo if you need to know. Hey, this one has a little bit of a Chateauian effect to it, so that's kind of cool. I'm glad we swapped it. The dot inlays, I mean, they look centered enough to me, so I think we are all set in that case. From what I can tell, I'm not seeing any neck pocket cracks, so I think this one is in the clear. Now we just need to check the grounding. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure what was up with that last one. I mean, does this one have maybe a little bit of that? Yeah, but most of that's just for my lighting in the room. But this one's nowhere near as bad as that last one. Unfortunately, something just wasn't quite right. But another fun little tidbit of information I relearned here is the reason why these headstocks go darker is apparently they still used a nitro lacquer finish on the headstocks back in the 70s, whereas the rest was their new finish that doesn't age as much. So apparently that's why there is some discrepancies between the colors, which is kind of cool to know. But apparently these American vintage guitars have just been plagued with a whole bunch of quality issues. Like the case, I would not say is the best fitting for this guitar. Like it's seated where it's supposed to be, but you really have to compress this block to even get it there. Like it wants to rest here, but then it's not in your neck rest. And I'm noticing this one has like the lacquer all over the sides of the frets, whereas my last one didn't. And maybe the neck needs to be budged just a tad because I notice our E string. I mean, it's not completely off the side of the neck, but you can definitely tell you have more room over here than you do over there. But I should be able to fix that. So now let's switch gears here and do some memorabilia. Inside package number one. Look what I found, guys. It's a... Uh, Really cool Gibson t-shirt. 
Now, it's a little bit big for me, but, you know, you, you can't turn down this stuff. The extra large was a lot cheaper than the large that I had found. But you got a Firebird, you got a Double Neck, you got 335s, regular Les Pauls, some other semi-hollow arch tops, even a Blues Hawk on that thing. That's cool. <laughs> Flying Vs. I picked this up from that secret website that somebody told me about where you just get great deals on all this Gibson memorabilia. I'm sorry, I'm not sharing it because I'm stocking up for the museum every couple of weeks there's just something new so i think it's just fantastic that i can pick this stuff up for a fair price but this is official gibson product here and apparently it's a double xl and box number two i think i know what's in here but let's open it to find out it's packing peanuts why why use packing peanuts on a tiny box like the big ones i get but these come on it's a 500t496r set but this looks like uh, early 2000s to me, because the packaging today is definitely a lot different than this, and it's definitely a lot different than what we've seen the past 10 years. So it was just kind of cool to see them in the original plexiglass boxes or whatever they are. Package number three. Let's hope it's not another one of my children's Christmas toys, because it says Amazon on it. Ah, oh, it's a empty box. <laughs> Let's hope it's in here, whatever it is. Okay, there it is. All right. So I didn't actually buy this. I traded for it. It's a cool late 90s, early 2000s Gibson USA. Only a Gibson is good enough pen. And we've got a 1994 Gibson medallion that looks like uh, you could put it on your keychain or do whatever you want with. This is a mild novelty. I didn't really care too much about it, but I thought this was really cool. I like 1994. That's a cool year for Gibson with the whole centennial year thing going on. And what's funny is I saw this listing on Reaver, but then I got a message. He's like, hey, I like the show. Would you like to trade a t-shirt for that? So I said, yeah, I can do that. Speaking of which, today I launched my new merchandise shop with Tee Public. I got the classic Trogly logos, but now with new colors. And I got a new signature catchphrase shirt. Look at this one. First fret neck depth. That's a big chonky neck. One inches. <laughs> you can check that link in the description if you want one. But I would say those look pretty good on the shrine. More so this one, because it reminds me of these old belt buckles. But hey, it's almost time. It's almost December. We're going to hopefully see more of these Gibson USA ornaments. We've got one more accessory, but let's break this up. Let's talk about some guitars. So I want to be abundantly clear. I did not buy these brand new from the Music Zoo. Somebody else bought this new limited edition release with the hopes of being able to flip it. However, the market wasn't moving fast enough for him, and he had some Martin acoustic that he needed to buy. So he basically liquidated these. So if anybody's interested in a pretty spanking deal, email me directly and I can hook you up with one of these. Unfortunately, my review and demo piece, the price is the price because I had to pay retail. And the answer to that question is uh, two more of these custom shop Dave Mustaines. Let's see what colors and kinds of tops did I get. Our first one is another one of the flame tops. That's a pretty good one. What I really liked about my review and demo piece is it has a little bit of a reverse chevron flame, so it kind of goes in towards the middle, which I think works on a V, but if you prefer more of a straight flame, I think that's what this one is for. Oh, wow. I wish I would have got this one for my review piece. It doesn't have the flaking nut stuff going on. You can see it's actually properly cleared over. I'm impressed. This one's number 71. It doesn't even have it on the treble side. Yeah, sorry. I changed my mind on this one. <laughs> I'm not selling this thing cheap. That's rare. If you really want to get picky, zoom in and go, yeah, it's not perfect right here. But it's nowhere near as bad as I had been seeing on these. So maybe I'll just inventory swap cost on those because this one's worth retail, 100%. And now case number two. Is it gonna be an ebony? Nope, it's another burst. Pretty even flame on this guy as well, I would say. I mean, these did eventually sell out. I mean, occasionally you can still find a brand new one popping up on Reverb. Like I know Wildwood just a few days ago listed it, but generally the flame tops sell. Now, if you want a good deal from a dealer on one of the ebony ones, I think you're eventually going to be able to see that because those did not seem to be all that popular. But hey, what do you know? Another one that has a good nut on it. Just some mild imperfections over here. So getting these, I, I kind of feel like a fool for accepting that last one because all of them that I was seeing on Reverb all had that flaky nut issue. So I just thought, hey, that's just how they all are. But no, nah, that was my bad for even accepting that guitar. I should have sent it back. So yeah, if you're in the market, let me know. Let's check out what's in this little box now. We've got newspapers. And oh, I remember now. I'm actually excited for this. 
So I was getting those new old stock T-tops and somebody had messaged me that said, hey, I've got a really beat up box that looks like that. But what is inside this customizing parts box? Is it more pickups? Oh, it's a, it's a dirty fingers. Okay, this is not what I thought it was. I don't remember buying this. <laughs> Maybe I didn't buy that other part and uh, I ended up buying this one. But no, this is a new old stock dirty fingers. The box isn't in the best of condition, but it still has the dirty fingers labeling, which is important to me. And you might be saying, hey, Trogley, don't you already have new old stock dirty fingers? Yes, but these are 80s. And technically it's the super dirt, which I assume they called it that because it's the whole double cream bobbins. But that's a good side by side look between 80s Gibson packaging and 70s giant, not very display friendly packaging. But besides the color difference, do you see the T's on the bobbins? Dirty Fingers did actually come out in the late 70s, back when they were still using the T bobbins. So even though it has the T's, you don't call it a T-top. It's a Dirty Finger because you got the double row of adjustable pole pieces. Now this stuff, I don't expect it to still be sealed, but it, this one does not look like it was used. That is clean. However, it does look like I'm missing the screws and, you know, maybe this was installed because that's just completely chopped off, but it definitely wasn't used for very long. Still a solid addition to my new old stock 70s parts. So yes, if you're selling anything like this, or you just have it taken up space and you want it to go to a future museum collection, feel free to hit me up. I don't pay crazy money for this stuff, but I pay a fair price, I would say. Now this stuff, I do not pay premiums for. I just think it's kind of cool to have them around. And now I've got one last thing to share with you guys tonight. It's not all that exciting, but it is for me. It is an old Gibson Explorer case that has some interesting stuff on it, like top end. We've got what looks like Rooster, two of those, so maybe it was in a band called that. You got a checkered board pattern, original Gibson, somebody's favorite radio station. Always like showing this stuff because inevitably you get at least one guy that goes, oh yeah, I remember that one. But sadly, all of our latches are broken, but miraculously the handle's still there, likely had been replaced. But there we go. This is what I needed for that Union Jack Explorer that we had just cleaned up in this episode. It definitely has a, a slightly musty odor to it. Like, not too bad, just like super vintage and definitely used. So I might let this air out. And in the meantime, maybe I'll figure out how to replace these things. Or if you're good at that, I, I suppose this one's not the best of condition. I, I might be convinced to sell it, but finding 70s and 80s hard shell cases for explorers, it's expensive, even if they are beat up. But all right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on that next one. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, you might enjoy this one from about two years ago.